Hey guys, welcome to Little Black But 91. Um, listen, Dr. Umar's got a really big point here. I know some of the people were seeing the comments and misunderstood what he was saying, but I need people to kind of get to a place where they fully understood what he was saying. The brother was talking some sense, okay? Let's read the statement. It says, I'm not going to give this too much energy as we have far more important issues to address than what happened 10 years ago. However, this isn't the end for Diddy. TD Jakes will help him set up his own mega church. He'll be saved and baptized and will probably make more money as a pulpit pimp than he ever has as a mogul. Puffy will rise from the ashes, born again. Okay. Now, what's really intriguing about this situation is I have fully understood what Dr. Umar was saying straight away, right? What he was letting us know was that someone like Diddy, uh, we've seen it with Mace, uh, we've seen it with, uh, what's the one that sang, um, this is how we do it, Montel Jordan, like we've seen a few other artists who have rebranded themselves, truly or not truly, Kanye West, into Christians or pastors or whatever, right, now, that's another story, um, so what he was letting us know is that, listen, like we, especially as a Christian community, are very forgiving and without actually doing the due diligence. The Bible says we should discern and test every spirit, right? Um, and so when we're in these situations, we don't just accept what someone says. We, we test every spirit right um and more, more importantly also when in amongst and that's 1 John 4 verse 1 by the way 1 John 4 verse 1 and amongst that also is that what training would somebody need to do to even go and change into being a pastor all of a sudden in the Christian realms well a lot of times people end up becoming pastors and they haven't done no training Okay, now I'm not saying that the Lord can't call you without you going to a Bible school. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what kind of training do they set themselves under? And the way that I, the way that I look at it is, is that um, it's very easy to have wolves in sheep's clothing within the community of the Christian folk in this day and age because people can become a pastor from behind the screen. I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, you should test my spirit through what I say because the Bible says no man can call Jesus Christ Lord except he have the Holy Spirit. Now, the whole point also, too, is that people need discipleship because look where Kanye is. In fact, Kanye has gone back to his sick so much so that he's doing even more than he was in before. And I know how it feels. I've done it myself. That's why I have leniency. This is why I have grace for things like this, right? What I see Kanye doing, I'm like, damn, Kanye, I understand, bro. You know, you had new wine and you had new wine in, in a new wine skin, but it went, you know, to, to, to bring about a new fresh revelation. But bro, you've gone back to your you've gone back to your sick as a dog. Like I did for three years. I went back and I was fornicating, doing all manner of stuff. And what, what I see with Kanye, and I'm going to go back on to P. Diddy, how it make, makes a sense, is what I see with Kanye is did a great, beautiful discography, made a whole album, Jesus is King, seemingly was putting Jesus Christ first, and then has stepped all the way back. And it's because oftentimes the discipleship hasn't finished right? The, the discipleship hasn't finished, number one. Number two, the other aspect also is that um, sometimes we haven't got deep enough roots to deal with the emotional wounds that we're carrying that we have not dealt with, and therefore they are rearing its ugly head. And some of us run, like Jonah does, r run back to our sick and become a prodigal son, right? So we have to also give that space as well. Now, here's, a, here's the thing. When someone does that, what do we do? If you told them once, the Bible says if you've gone with a brother, if you go with two brothers, if the church has told you, let them be. Let them stay where they are. Let them be like tax collectors. You have to let, let me be like a, a, a prodigal song amongst the pigs. There's nothing I can do about it. Now, PDD situation, slightly different. Here it is why. We, have, we haven't heard any confession of Jesus Christ. We've heard, we've heard him talk about God, but no confession about who Christ is and Christ being Lord and the fact that Jesus Christ is his personal savior. We've never heard that. You know why? Because I don't think that's where he's at at the moment. It's almost reminding me of the Mayweather and the Pacquiao situation where Mayweather thanked God, but Pacquiao said, I thank Jesus Christ as Lord. He made a clear distinction and difference between the two because no man can keep call Jesus Christ Lord except he have the Holy Spirit. So we know because people can't say certain things because they don't have the Spirit of God in them. We know because many people don't even have a relationship with the Father and so therefore they can't speak about the Son. You don't know who he is. So in this instance with P. Diddy and what Dr. Umar is kind of telling us is warning us almost as well, be careful because what we have seen in the general public of the church, the black church specifically, is that people transform from that place of the, the world and then go into something like pastorship or whatever, right? And suddenly leading the whole damn flock and people are, people are so intrigued to want to follow that person that they haven't done the due work of discerning whether this person really is somebody they should be following, whether there's fruits or not. The Bible tells us in Galatians 1 verse, I think it's verse... Uh, uh, verse, verse 18, it says, and I'm going to show you this really quickly. 
right? Verse 18 says, Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him 15 days. Okay? After three years, you know, because remember, he, this is, look, verse 15, but when, he, but when he who had set me apart before I was born, who called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him amongst the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone. Okay, nor did I go up to Jerusalem for those who were, were the apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Okay, he was away for three years. Okay, he was away for three years before he then began, began to be in a space where he can um, uh, uh, come to the disciples, right? Now, of course, he preached a little bit. We saw this also in Damascus, right? We preached later on. We see this. So there's a transformation that happens. And when that transformation happens to somebody like him, someone like Didi, the change is often astronomical. This is why when I was looking at Kanye, I was like, the change has to be considerably huge because of what you're coming from. You're coming from a kingdom of darkness. There ain't no way there's a soft conversion because where you're coming from, there's a lot to forgive and there's a lot to release and there's a lot to leave behind. The bigger the thing that has to be left behind is why the parable of Jesus talking to Simeon in his house, he said, which one would be great, more grateful? The person that has 50,000 to, to forgive or the person that has 5,000 to give? If, if your debt was 50,000 versus 5,000, who would you expect to be more forgiven? I'm expected, who would, you expect the, who would you expect the person to be more like ecstatic that their debt has been forgiven? The person who has a bigger debt. So if somebody's coming from a place where they're, they're in the kingdom of darkness, they've seen things, the transformation has to be, they have to be on fire because what they're, what they're coming in, where they're coming from to where they're coming to, the demons that know them, demons tremble at your presence. Like the demons know them. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah, Paul I know, Jesus I know, who are you? You know, sounds a skeever conversation. So what he's addressing here is, is actually talking about the relationship that T.D. Jakes actually has with P.D.D. I'm going to do a part two of this because I, I didn't get to address it all. But because we've heard about the Suwalu, what he's actually kind of highlighting is the relationships that are birthed from these two being together. It could be T.D. Jakes kind of setting him up to be uh, in a place where he rebrands himself and we forgive him because he's Christian. But I, we need to see the fruits. And we need to see the fruits. And uh, we need to test the spirit too, right? We need to be seen. Is this person really for Christ now? Because I told you, no man can call Jesus Christ Lord except he be, uh, unless except he be have the Holy Spirit. It's the first Corinthians 12, right? So, um... I totally get what uh, Dr. Umar was saying in this position, and I understand it fully. Um, you know, Diddy can say he's sorry all he wants, but we need to see the fruits of that sorriness. We need to see a, a, a recompense. We need to see uh, the redemption arc. We need to see how that plays a part in how you impact your community now. I mean, you know what I mean? Because when we see the story of Paul, the disciples were actually afraid of Paul. Oh, no, no, they were scared. It took Barnabas, this Acts 9, it took Barnabas to come and say, yo, Donnie's. This is one of us, right? Let's have a look, quick look at this. Look, uh, I think it's Acts 9. Uh, it might be in Acts 10, I think it was. Yes, look, okay. So, so for some days he was with the disciples at Damascus and immediately he proclaimed Jesus, Jesus in a synagogue saying, he is the son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, it's not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon his name. And he... And has he not come here for the purpose to bring them bound before the chief priest? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus, Christ, Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but the plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him, but the disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. Okay? And when he came to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to him on how uh, to them uh, uh, declared to them on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him and how Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. There's a complete drastic change in Paul. So if, if we're going to talk about if we're going to talk about uh, you know our brother coming into the church, there's a complete drastic. The Holy Spirit needs to meet him. Okay, we need therapy and we need the Holy Spirit to meet him, and then be a dramatic change. Otherwise. You just being in a church and being a pastor will not cut it. We need to see a dramatic change. Uh, but let me know your thoughts down below, guys. If you agree, disagree, um, like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification uploads. We appreciate you guys. Say lots to the We'll see you again soon.